Hello, my name is Jacobson Beck. I am the level designer and sole creator of the area before you, Humanity's Last. I wanted to create a five to eight minute third person action adventure experience where the player goes through a non-combatant area and they must simply open a door but first find the key. The whole design process to this was to make sure that I created an area that felt like information was uh, given to the player in a natural flow. Instead of giving it all to them up front or not giving them enough, I wanted them to find the pieces as they went, as if they were coming to natural conclusions on how to get through these obstacles. So this is an opening area, and towards the beginning of any game, you would give the player kind of a, a safe area just to kind of test out the controls. We even put the controls on the screen so we can jump, crouch, shoot, all that good stuff. Custom art assets were created for this to make sure the level had a full feeling. Art right, uh, the water right here. Wood over there. And it was important to make sure that they all felt cohesive, so proper sound effects were all applied. Obviously there's one way to go, so we're going to keep moving forward. And we come into the main area right here. Now as you can see, there's this small opening in the water right there with even a small blue, like, shining thing under it to draw the player's eye. Ultimately, that is going to be the way out of this area. And I, as often as I could, I wanted the player to see this as their center frame. This small staircase broken creates a gate, so the player is unable to backtrack to the previous part of the level. So that we can, we can either unload that or we can just move on and the player doesn't have to worry about any of that. It was important to make sure the player could get a sense of the world and didn't feel like they were running through a boxed hallway. So instead of using large walls to keep the player moving forward, I would use objects that they wouldn't be able to jump over, but they could see over. And so they can see the mountains over there, they can see some of this extra grass, and it creates a full lush environment. To our left is a collectible right here. It's connected to a- it's next to this monk statue, which is going to be important later. I wanted to create a system for collectibles where if a player wants to find every collectible and scour the level and find all of them, they can do that. There's no harm to them. But for players such as myself, who I, I want to get to the main story, I want to continue down the main hallway, I want to keep moving forward, I don't want to waste time looking at every nook and cranny. Well, every collectible is connected to a monk statue. The monk statue won't always be quite so close to collectible, but if you see a monk statue, you can be pretty, you, you're guaranteed there's going to be a collectible nearby. So it's worth my time to deviate from the main path and find this collectible. Now, another main thing is the red light in the monk's face, once you pick up the collectible, disappears. So that way, if I saw the same monk statue twice, I would now, I would, I would know if I'd picked up that collectible or not. As we move forward, we have to move straight. We see the gate right here, which is obviously going to be a, like an entrance to something. So it pulls the player forward. They see a lever. We get simple instructions on how to act, operate the lever. We pull it. The gate doesn't open, but a gear turns. And it looks like there might be a missing gear. Now here's our key. Here's the challenge. Here's the whole point of this level is to find this gear so that we can get into the main gate. Obviously, it's not in this area. We see a nice little water wheel over here. Maybe that's operating the gears when the lever is pulled. Who knows? But we're going to move forward. We'll backtrack a little bit and see if we can find where this gear might be. Now, this whole new area opens up that we weren't able to see earlier because our back was turned to it. But as the player looks closely, they can see a water wheel. And that might hint that there's some similar objects over there. The gear might be over there. So if they quickly just look, they see there's oh, this whole new path over here that might that would probably take them to that small island over there. This right here, this bridge lowering down to just a lower bit of level, was just a simple way to keep the level interesting by offering different uh, height variations so that the player never feels like they've just been walking on a flat plane for too long. Now... Since it's at the beginning of a third-person action-adventure game, uh, the player needs to learn how to jump, and doing this in a non-hostile environment is important. So right now, the only way for the player to get through is to jump. There's no text on screen, nothing saying you should jump, you just gotta learn that jump is gonna get you through this. So we got another jump over here. This is the most important part right here, is this gap is gonna be too wide for a jump. It's actually going to be, require a double jump. 
Experienced players might have realized this would uh, take a double jump, and they could have done it the first time. But notice there's no, once again, no text on screen. The player's going to have to figure this one out. So maybe even a, out of pure frustration, they just try the double jump, and they get across. But without any text on screen, I was able to tell them and teach them to double jump with a non-hostile environment. So now if there was enemies nearby later on in the game, they could perform a double jump knowing that they where it's going to land. So we continue on, we move up, and we see this water. It looks like it's coming out of a cave, which flashes back to that first area where the water was going into the rocks. This gives a little bit of continuity to the level and makes you feel like you're going through a cohesive environment. Next we see this gear and this switch that's broken. So there's some pieces, like we're uh, flashbacking back to the first lever to uh, show the player that there might be some more stuff around here that we could possibly use. And important, this water, obviously flowing to the left of the screen, flows towards a water wheel. But if we keep looking left, it naturally shows the gear to the player. And now it also center frames where the door kind of was, but more importantly, we can see this water entrance again. The door is hidden, which we think is the way out, but ultimately it's going to be under this water, which is what I keep showing the player. Now, and if they're really good, they'll notice there's another little entryway looking right here. There's this little arc that might be over another door. So before we continue on, we can go and check that area out. Just, just breadcrumbing the player, there might be an extra area over here to come check out. We come into this little cave lit with more of these blue rocks. Over there we see there's something that looks a little more unique. It's lit more than the rest of the realm, so it's going to pull the player over there. Once again, a little opening, just giving more continuity to the world. So you can see sort of the outside, so you never feel too boxed in. Well, obviously we've got this chest, so we can open it up. And it provides the player right now with a rocket launcher. So it's a completely new weapon. And the player can now use this to disposal. Obviously, it's not too important right now because there will be no enemies in this area. But if they wanted this weapon later on in the game uh, to give them an edge, it could help them. But since this was kind of a secret area, if they didn't have the rocket launcher, it wouldn't be at their detriment. They could still continue the game and they could do fine with the regular gun. But the rocket launcher might provide them with some extra fun. Now, instead of making the player just go climb back through the water and leave this area in a boring manner... Um, there's this ladder, and it's lit better than the rest of the realm. You can even see some light shafts kind of like telling you that there's maybe something up there. Um, and previously we learned about the double jump, which is what you're going to need to get up here. So you climb up, and we're back in this tower that you might have seen earlier when we walked through the level. Now, important, let's say the player hadn't picked up the gear yet. Well, we now present them with what where the gear probably is, and we remind the player once again, you should probably go check that area out, because... That's where the gear is going to be. That's, they don't know that yet, but we keep hitting them over the face with the area they need to go to until they get it. They can look around, see more of that area, more of that open landscape, uh, just showing everything off. But once again, we got another collectible. And as you can see, there's the monk statue. And as we pick it up, red light disappears. Now, the player's done this twice, and maybe now they've connected the monk statue, maybe not quite yet, but if they were observant earlier... They will realize that they saw a monk statue over here. Now quickly, to bring up this, this small player choice. The player has thus far gone this way and they've jumped over. But there is this wood piece right here. And they can use that and they can jump and they can actually get across just fine. A little bit cooler fashion, maybe some style points. Um, and maybe the player even thinks they beat my design a little bit. They think that, oh, I kind of went outside the box. I did, I did, did what the designer didn't intend to, per se. Well... The player still jumped, and that's all I wanted them to do here. Once again, this monk statue a little more hidden, but we see it. And we also notice the red light. But we, we don't see a collectible anywhere. This is the first one where the collectible is not necessarily right in the way of the monk. But maybe, if we swim down a little bit, we can find it. Which, obviously, it's almost right under the monk. So, we were hinted that it might be around here. We can go check it out. And now we feel good because we got the collectible and we can keep moving on. Now swimming back, we've, we've seen this area, this little doorway, multiple times. Let's, let's eventually just go check it out. We'll see what's in there. So we've got kind of this open area. And you might have noticed earlier, but there's this, like, barred gate. So let's say the player hadn't found that uh, chest yet. Well, 
if they see this barred gate where that the open landscape into the sky actually kind of highlights this area, brings the player over, and now they can see that chest over there. And then go, well, maybe there's something over there. Like, maybe I should go see if I can find a way to get in there. Swing around once more. See the wooden gate. So the player can localize that now they're they're kind of under where they were standing originally. And there's this gate here. And obviously it looks like it might even open up to some underwater areas. Hinting that this is actually the real exit out of the level. Which we will get back to once the player tries to open the main gate. Now if the player were to continue swimming around looking for collectibles, they'll notice that they'll start to lose their health. Like they're, they're getting a red flashing. And obviously we do have breath. We can't stay underwater forever. Which is important to come in a little bit. So we found the gear. Uh, for any player that might have come to the door first and found the gear over there, their big aha moment was when they found the gear because they already knew they solved the puzzle. But like, let's say the player actually went left first. They didn't go to the gate, but they went left and they actually found the gear. Well, that player wouldn't get their aha moment till they got all the way over here and realize that this gear can be used against this gate and placed into it. So two different types of players just got this, their aha moment, or they just realize that they've, they've achieved something, but in two very different ways. So once you put the gear in, you can now pull the lever, and the gate actually moves now. So we're going to get in. But oh no. There was a person trapped in here, and it looks like there might have been some sort of, some sort of cave-in maybe? Anyways, we can't get through, obviously, so maybe this isn't the way that we thought it was going to be. Those enemies, they might have gotten here first and they've caused some sort of cave-in. Who knows what's happened yet. But the player can still hear the water running right now. And these grates even show the water below them. And as you saw earlier, there was the gate in the water and that gate was pretty long. So maybe we've opened up a new passage that we didn't even think about originally. And check it out. We've opened up the actual passageway the player is going to have to go through. We're just taking what they're expecting and actually throwing a little bit additional at them. Once again, we see a monk statue, but we don't see the collectible exactly right at first. So we look around a little bit, and it's always pretty nearby. There it is. So we can go and pick that up, and now we have it. The red light's gone, so we, we know we've cleared this area of collectibles, and we can move on. So, we've got one area to go, so we're just going to keep moving forward. And it looks like we're going to have to go into a little cave where all the sound starts to die. And that's important because I really wanted to heighten the sense of what's about to happen. So silence it will make loud sounds even louder. So we have to go up. We're limiting the player. I measured this area out perfectly to make sure the player would start to lose health no matter what before they got out. So we come out. We've made it into the hideout. We got some big revealing sound effects, but it looks like we're a little too late. The enemies made it in, they've burned down whatever was going on, this big civilization in this giant cavern. Um, at this point though, we just gotta find someone. Maybe someone knows, maybe there's some survivors. Looks like there's some wreckage over here, maybe some people were around here, so we'll just continue on. We're not really able to go anywhere, but there is this, once again, this blue stone that's like pulling the player in this direction. So if the player goes and checks it out, they realize that they can climb under this thing. I see a person just briefly run by the screen. Now this brings up some questions like, who was that? Why'd they run away? Let's go find them. And this is all little devices to pull the player in that direction and keep them moving forward. So they go through. And obviously, as we saw, there was some wreckage that stopped them, uh, the player, from getting to there. But there's a bunch of explosions going on over there. So let's go check them out. We got it. We pulling the player in this direction. And as it pulls it, we go into a quick cutscene where a wreck happens and a car hits hits the player supposedly, but we go to black screen and this is actually the end of the level right now. And I wanted to thank all you guys for watching, listening to my commentary. If you have any comments or critiques, please leave a comment, let me know. But uh, thanks for watching.